so the, the, there's a lot of data and along with the data we do have a compute engine like as far as cloud goes you have you have compute that could be spun up and spun down as fast or as slow as you want and you have enormous ability to process the massive amount the massive amounts of data that we are getting and along with that there is also the advancements and the algorithms that that allows us to actually look at the data and get insights out of the data as well. Um, so is AI new? No, it's not new. Um, AI has been um, has been in research labs for more than a, for over decades now, since the Dartmouth conferences in 1956. Um, so lately, there has been a lot of interest in AI because of the advances in the algorithms and the compute power that we talked about right now. So along with the AI, um, there are there are there are various groups of AI. So machine learning is a subset of AI where machines can perform specific tasks as well as or better than some of the humans can. Think about speech transcription or think about how um, image analytics, you can use cameras to, and you can use some of the algorithms to detect whether there is a defect in the products or not. So those are some of the things machine learnings are good at. And there is another branch of machine learning called deep learning, which takes us deeper and it's based on neural networks. Neural networks um, are, are essentially the interconnections between the neurons in our brain, but unlike the brain where any neuron can connect to other any other neurons. These are AI networks have a discrete layers and connections with lots of training. The neurons get tuned to get precisely to give the right answers. Um, think about um, a dog. Um, how can a machine detect whether it is a dog or not? Because all dogs do have eyes. All dogs do have do have fur. All dogs do have tails. So it cannot go by generic understanding of what a dog is or what breed of the dog it is going to be. So it has to think in terms of layers. And it has to say, OK, um, this is the dog. Does it have a short hair? Does it have a pointy hair, et cetera, et cetera, so that it can detect what type of dog it is and what breed of the dog it is going to be as well. So that is the power of deep learning. And we will see how deep learning could be applied in a lot of enterprises as well. So, so with that, um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about a how or what are the Microsoft AI advances? I'm not going to spend too much time here. I, I just wanted to highlight that <clears throat> uh, Microsoft research spends a lot of uh, investment in looking at AI and looking at the algorithms and how can we actually apply those AI as well. Um, we hit the human parity with the object recognition in 2016 um, that and a lot of advancements have been made to get to the human parity as far as AI goes and the latest would be the machine translation. So um, with that, um, now that we talked about AI, let's actually look to see what is AI and what is AI in the context of of Microsoft. Um, when we talk about AI, there are three components of AI um, that Microsoft takes into consideration. It is not to replace humans. It is to it is to amplify humans with the intelligent technologies. First thing, what what makes us human is the reasoning, understanding, and interacting. So those are three areas where we can actually help amplify <coughs> humans a lot using the artificial intelligence. What is reasoning? Reasoning typically is taking a lot of data and adding logic on top of that so that you can understand and make decisions based on data. And, it, and as you get more data and as you get over time, you can learn from the data and you can keep feeding it and go into a virtual cycle. <clears throat> Next one would be understanding. Last one would be interacting. Um, and AI enables us to understand and interpret the data in our environment and also how can we interact with the environment with the amount of data that we have. So 
all of this is great, but how does it apply to an enterprise, right? So when we look at enterprises, um, there was a study by IDC, I believe, where they went and interviewed a lot of business leaders to understand how do they recognize the blind spots in their organization. So one in three business leaders said that they frequently made critical decisions without the information that they actually need. And 53% of them did not have access to the information across their organization that they need to do their job. So then the, the survey actually went into deeper to see, okay, how many of them are, how do they actually make decisions? So when they said, how do they make decisions? They said that there are three factors that support majority of their decisions. One is personal experience. Everybody leans on their personal experience to actually make a decision. For example, I think about 75% of them leaned on their personal experiences to make the decisions because they know, they have seen the trend, they have seen some of the data that they thought that they may need and based on that they made decisions. And about 60% of them said, okay, I rely on analytics, I rely on basic reporting that I get to make the decisions that I actually, um, that, that I need to make. And only 50% of them said that I can use my experience and I can use the data to make an informed decisions. So that's the world that we live in. And when these business decision makers, when they want to make decisions about how to run their business along with the data, they really do need to start thinking about various facets of, of the data that they're going to be dealing with. Um, what do I do with the legacy system? What do I do with the increasing regulations, like for example, GDPR, and along with the privacy risks and threats that we face. Last week, the Twitter CEO account got hacked. So there are a lot of security and privacy threats that are also part of today's challenges. So, um, and, and also on the other side of the business is going to be the airborne processes. Um, how can we revamp these processes and how can we actually look to see the tool sets that we deal with and how can we improve the tool set so that we can make informed decisions. Um, so I, I, I do want to walk you through some of the Microsoft journey that we had. Um, when we looked at our own Microsoft, we looked at um, we looked at how we run the business. So we realized that most of the challenges that Microsoft Finance went through are the same challenges that most of the enterprises go through as well. Um, the, Microsoft is a much more complex organization with a lot of lines of businesses. So when we want to make a forecast to Wall Street, we have to take into account all the subsidiaries, all the lines of businesses to make that decision. Um, to, so when we looked at our processes, we saw that most of our customers or most of our internal folks still lived on the legacy systems. They still use static reports. So if they come to a meeting and if the, if the business asked them, how did you come up with that number? They really could not quickly drill down to see how they came up with the number. So drill down capabilities were missing um, so that they really did not know why something happened. So let's say we fix that and then comes the question of what is going to happen. So to actually predict what is going to happen, we ran through the same challenge. We ran through some of the processes that most of the folks did were manual. So the data, uh, most of the organizations are used to working with the bad data. So they take the data and they have a backend processes after a report is, is provided by the corporate so that they have backend processes to clean the data to make it look like whatever the answer that they wanted to get. So there were a lot of process, disjointed process that were also part of the whole ecosystem. Um, and so as a world grows, so there were a lot of threats. So sending data through email was not a, 
really secure way for you to conduct businesses. So Microsoft Finance team decided to overhaul this entire processes to see how can we take MS Finance on to a digital transformation journey. So first, we said, okay, we're going to centralize all the data and we are going to make sure that everybody can communicate using the same platform, which meant that for us, it's a Microsoft 365 platform um, where you can actually store all the files on your OneDrive and you have Teams and you, you have your Skype to connect the lines of businesses so that everybody can talk to each other and then we were using the same visualization like Power BI and Power Apps so that we all can see the same information so we can understand what happened and we can also understand why it happened because it had the drill through capabilities. And then we realized that, okay, all of us need to log into the same platform so that we're all looking at the same data. We're all coming to the same conclusion and we can also standardize the processes so that we can all follow the same process and slowly move away from the manual process to <clears throat> to a much more dynamic process and that's where the dynamics 365 platform came for us so it has the crm and it has the ax component so it gave a holistic business overview for us and then lastly came the azure platform which has the built-in ai capabilities that could allow us to predict what happened based on the data. And that could also actually help us with the, the actions as to, okay, based on what is going to happen, this is what you should do if X, Y, Z are actually happening as well. And then came the repeatability. So as we understand the processes, as we understand um, the, the business, then we can identify parts of the processes that could be automated <clears throat> so that so that we can see how can we improve the efficiency of the processes. Those are some of the areas where bot service came in very, very handy because it gives everybody a single entry point so that they can actually look at the same information and we can actually repeat the process as well for example um, if we if a marketing group want to know um, did I spend all the marketing budget or not what used to take three days for to get a response and now it could be automated with a simple bot um, the user can ask the bot a question the bot can go into the back end and it can pull all the information and it can come back to them and say that this was your budget this is what you have spent so far and based your based on the patterns of your spend or the campaigns this could be some of the right next steps for you so that's the power of technology and that's how microsoft finance went through the digital transformation journey using microsoft 365 dynamics 365 and also the power of azure so that it gives the vast compute power and it also has some of the technologies um, some of the services that are underpinning services that could enable these sort of transformation and the and and the processing capability. Um, so, with that being said, um, now that we talked about AI, now that we talked about how Microsoft went through their own journey, let's see what do we need to be successful with AI. So, when we look at what needs to be successful, or what do we need to be successful with the AI, there is going to be essentially three key ingredients. Um, so when we talk about success with AI, it mainly hinges on the strategy and the business case. So you need to have an overarching strategy that allows you to think through in a short midterm and a long-term view. Um, a long-term view is where you want to do X. Y or Z. I want to monetize my data. That could be a long-term view. But you have to really think through what are the short-term goals that I can set so that I can slowly reach to that long-term goal. So it's very important to realize what the strategy is going to be and what are the business cases that we can build in the short and midterm so that we can support the long-term goal. 
and also the maturity of the data and the, the cleanliness of the data, that's also going to play a bigger part. <clears throat> As the organization grows, the maturity of the data would also grow. Um, for example, I was working on an expert action for a financial services customer, and they were getting a lot of clickstream data based on the clicks that the customer has been making on their website. So based on the clickstream, you can generate a profile, but you have to really think about how, what are some of the privacy and compliance reasons I need to have? How can I share the data? Um, how can I actually preserve the privacy, but also standardize or normalize the data and I can distribute to the line of businesses? And how do I think about the quality and control of the data? All of those um, comes into picture when you think about data maturity. And also, everybody needs to get into a data culture, meaning how can I use my data assets to make decisions? <clears throat> All of these are going to play a, a key role in having an organization to have success with AI and also to become an AI-driven company or AI-first company. <clears throat> So within Microsoft, we, our mission is to empower everyone to do more, to achieve more. So with that in mind, we already are, are building some of the advanced solutions. Those are pre-built. Some of them are going to be um, going to be the agents or the cognitive services that we have um, we have worked with. We know how to scale with those services and we created those APIs so that it is available for consumption for the public. Others are going to be pre-built solutions. Um, if you have a customer care, every organization has a support and they and people are going to call into the support for um, to request a password reset like think about a normal IT I need to reset my password I need to think about how I onboard I need to get access to X Y or Z system um, that's one set of um, that's one set of audience or one set of business cases. The other one is going to be how can I improve my sales? So how can I how can I understand what is the next best product that I need to be thinking about or I need to be imagining or I need to be moving towards? So those are some of the scenarios that we have seen as the common scenarios across a lot of industries. So those are already pre-built into some of the solutions that we have in our platform. Uh, for example, Dynamics 360. 65 has the customer care intelligence already built in. It has sales intelligence. It has market intelligence already built in. The other set of use cases are going to be custom. These are not common across a lot of industries, but these do touch on most of the industries. Like, for example, knowledge management or predictive maintenance. If you're in a manufacturing industry, you're going to think about predictive maintenance. Um, and the other one is going to be workplace analytics. How can I make my workplace more effective, more engaging so that um, so that I can streamline some of the some of the experiences and I can give or I can keep my my company more engaging. So there are a set of use cases for some. We have already created APIs so that you don't have to spend time in creating those models or you don't have to spend time thinking about how do I translate my my language from A to B so that I can actually gain intelligence or I can serve my customers better. So there are a set of APIs and there are a set of solutions that get pre-baked and there are also a set of algorithms that we we give for you and that there is also solution templates meaning we have put together what an end-to-end -end solution would look like so that you don't have to do a guesswork on which service do I need to use to store my data or which service do I need to do my analysis on and what are some of the algorithms that I need to use as well. So with all of that being said, let's jump into a few of the scenarios. Um, I know that we only have 30 minutes, so uh, we just need to get going pretty quickly. Um, so some of the conversational, like conversational AI is one.
one of the most popular AI technologies that's out there because it helps you to streamline your customer support. It helps you to improve the customer experience because all of us are really looking to see how can we improve the productivity? How can I improve my customer experience so that I can create that one-on-one -on -one interaction with my customers? So these are some of the scenarios that, um, that we have worked um, uh, that we have worked with other customers on the conversational AI. With that being said, um, so the intelligent virtual um, agent is, is nothing but the conversational AI, and that helps the customers to get the right support pretty quickly. For example, if you are in the customer support, if somebody can sign in or somebody needs to um, really think about um, changing their password and that you can have agents that could cater to various different needs and also various different audience segmentation. Not everything is has to be customer facing. The, it, the AI could also help the internal support agents and also they can also um, take those insights and they can give the support leader a, a snapshot or a quick overview of how we are doing with in servicing with those customers as well. So with that being said, um, when we look at digital transformation, we're looking at it in four different facets. Um, we are looking to see how can we incorporate AI into existing workflows, for example, um, it may be individual cognitive services or the packaged products. Um, either one of those, you could still embed AI to, um, to increase efficiency within your processes. And also, how can we think about transforming those services as well? And how can we better engage <clears throat> the audience in our organizations? Um, so with that, um, let's go into the feedback loop because with any AI, you really need to think about the feedback loop. Um, so as you're engaging customers or as you're optimizing the operations, you're gathering data and based on the data, you're refining your business goals or you're refining how you're optimizing the processes. And based on that, you're going to take certain actions to achieve the business goals. It could be engaging the customer. So you are you have a bot that is that is that is conversing with the customers and you realize that the bot is optimizing for the wrong thing. So it cannot answer 50% of questions. So then you can see what are the patterns of the questions and then you can go back and improve the bot experience so that most so that the customers can actually see an improved experience. Um, so along with that, um, so even if we go to the next slide, I just wanted to cite this with an example. When we talk about feedback loops, we're talking about how can people and technology is at the center. Uh, we are trying to understand how can we serve the customers better with the products that we have. So there are a set of products or capabilities that we have used to, to manage the content, for example, or how can we actually serve the content and what are the platform or what are the infrastructure capabilities that we have to host this amount of data or to serve the customers better with the resiliency or with the performance that we are going to have. And how are we going to look at the customer signals and how are we going to engage with those customers as well? So let me just walk you through this with a real life example that we have. Think about we worked with Tesla. Um, so one of the one of the use cases for the Tesla was that um, they they actually um, thought that okay, um, based on all the marketing pilots, they wanted to actually push the autopilot as a free trial to some of the cars for the existing customers. But based on the autopilot the feature. They started observing some of the feedback. So they started observing some of the data points. And based on the data points, they realized that when the car takes the sharp turns with the autopilot, um, the, the, the users were feeling very overwhelmed. So they realized that, OK, I really do need to go back and refine this. So they got the data based on the data. The Tesla data scientists could actually see 
I have this feedback from the customers and I have this I have this telemetry that I'm getting from the car so that they can match that and they can see um, how can they fix this particular feature so that they can delight the customer experience. Based on that, Tesla developed a custom curved speed adoption feature, adaption features, and push it to the existing cars. And they got an overwhelming feedback that the feature was a great success. So this is how you can really take a business problem and you can you can get the feedbacks and you can adjust how you are going to serve your customers better. With that being said, so as far as Microsoft goes, we are investing in three key areas. One is going to be platforms, which means we are coming up with new capabilities. We have a lot of open source investments and we have a lot of out of the box investments. For example, cognitive services, um, you have text speech, um, all the recognition APIs, those are already there. Um, we are also infusing AI into all the applications. Think about your Excel, think about your PowerPoint, um, um, all of those platforms that have AI infused experiences. And last but not least, we are investing a lot on the business solutions like Dynamics 365 and Office 365 as well. So um, I'm going to quickly run through some of the AI capabilities um, that we are seeing. Um, as far as Microsoft AI goes, we are taking a four pronged approach. We are looking to see how can we harness the AI to fundamentally change how we interact with the ambient computing or agents in our lives. Um, there are about 12 billion queries or questions asked of Cortana and, um, and an agent has typically over 133 million active users. So as, as the agent is getting more data, she is getting more smarter as well in terms of understanding the world and understanding the context as well. So having the Cortana across multiple devices gives an ecosystem effect where she understands what the daily tasks are and how what she what she needs to propose to you before you even think about needing it. Um, if you have used Cortana, you would see that the Cortana actually can remind you um, based on your emails. If you're supposed to follow up with uh, with one of your colleagues, and if you did not follow up, she will remind you. So that sort of intelligence is what we are seeing with the agents. And this is not just Cortana. You can actually embed Cortana into your applications, or you can actually create another um, chatbot that would have a similar intelligence as well. Um, so the next one is going to be the applications. Um, applications are typically the the core of your business productivity and communication and also the business process. So infusing them with, with intelligence is something that we are working on as well. Are we, are, we are continuing to have more investments so that the apps can actually see, they can actually anticipate, they can predict, and they can automate most of the mundane tasks that you may have. And the next one is going to be the intelligent services. Um, it, so as you can see, Microsoft has a lot more investments going on as far as R&D goes in terms of speech and vision. So the, the results of the investments are what you see as some of the services, like, for example, Skype translator. You can use the translator using the Skype so I can talk in English and you can listen to it in whatever language that you are comfortable with. Uh, same thing goes for the cognitive services API, a uh, lot of our text, a lot of our knowledge mining, all of those are a direct result of the R&D that we have. Um, and last but not least, the platform capabilities that we are introducing. Uh, okay, let's talk about cognitive services APIs. Um, so the, the platform capabilities, uh, we are investing more on how to make it secure. Um, security is one of the top priorities for Microsoft. So where we have a lot more investments going on, how do we harden the AI platform so that we're building a secure AI platform? And also how can how can AI services that needs different type of technologies, for example, if you need FPGAs on the cloud, 
um, you have those capabilities already built in as a part of the platform as well. And we have a global hyperscale cloud infrastructure that we continue to improve for, for the performance, for the scale, and for the security as well. So with that being said, um, let's see what it means for infusing the AI. Um, when we talk about infusing AI, your Windows or the Azure services it really has threat detection. And you can't really think about manually detecting the threats or thinking about the combinations of where the threat would come from. So we do use machine learning. We do a, use AI services to detect the threats. Um, similarly, we, used AI, so we use AI services to build a knowledge graph so that we can see who are closest to you and how can we help you to think about what your influence of circle is and what are some of the interesting things that they're working on as well. Along with this, you do have facial recognition and inking and other capabilities as well. As far as Visual Studio goes, we are really a developer-centered company. So how can we how can we give developers more control on what sort of frameworks that they're going to use. So how do they want to think about managing the AI models? It's not one and done. You really have to think about continuous integration. So how do we help developers to have CICD frameworks embedded into the Visual Studio as well? And last but not least, the office. Um, how can we infuse AI into the office? For example, how can we come up with a resume assistant? So if you are creating a resume, how can we have an assistant to help you with crafting a better resume? as well. So these are some of the examples of where we are infusing AI and hopefully that inspires you to think about how you want to infuse AI with your business processes or the applications as well. So no AI is complete unless we get to the data conversation. Uh, most of the AI is just the algorithms. Um, majority of the work goes on in the data platform. And how do we think about data engineering? How do we get the data? How do we confirm it? How do we think about quality and control so that we can quickly move from data to the knowledge? And you have a variety of Azure services that would allow you to do that. I'm not gonna talk or I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but this is just an example of the amount of services we have and the open source support that we offer as well so that you can use the tools and technologies that you're familiar with. Let's see, what are some of the patterns that we have for the AI solutions? So, Business agents, we already did talk about the, the conversational AI, B2B, B2C, and B2E scenarios. There are a lot of patterns as far as the manufacturing and security um, applications as well. Think about how can we look at the, how can we look at an object detection so that if you're working in a shop floor, um, and if there is a hazard, you can help. You can help the, the technicians to avoid it. Or every company has documents. Um, how can we look at the vast set of documents that we have? And documents and content does not need to be just in a documentation format. It could also be in a video format as well. So how can we take all the content and how can we mine for the knowledge so that we can understand the customers better and we can serve them better? And everybody who talks about AI always know about the autonomous systems and how can we um, how can we um, uh, how can we add intelligence to the vehicles or the networks or the, the RPAs or business process automations as well? Um, how can we take a process and how can we make it simpler or how can we add efficiency to the process as well? So these are some of the patterns that we see when we work with when we work with the Azure machine learning. Um, I do want to quickly touch upon some of the customer stories before it's too late. Um, <clears throat> I'll just walk through one or two of the customer stories. The first customer story I want to touch upon is the Macy's. Um, Macy's is a large retail customer based out of US. I don't know how many of you know Macy's or not, but it's a retail. So as far as when the retail 
um, when, when it's a retail business, you really do need to think about it. How are you going to engage the shoppers? Um, because today's shoppers don't really go to the store. They do most of the shopping online as well and also mobile. So they, their biggest challenge was uh, how can they recognize the shoppers um, and how can, how can they understand what are the channels that they are using so that they can optimize the shopping experience and meet the customers where they are. So they wanted to really accomplish three things with this transformation. They wanted to provide seamless shopping journeys. For example, if I'm looking at a jacket online, uh, if I go to the store, I should be able to locate where the jacket is. That's a very simple example. Um, so how can they provide seamless shopping journeys and how can they connect customers with a quick answer? If I want to return something and if it's over 30 days, how does the return policy work? So those are some of the quick answers that they wanted to provide for the customers. And also they wanted to optimize the customer experience for now and for the future. So these are the three goals that they had and they started using Dynamics 365 AI so that they can use the customer care intelligence that comes as a part of Dynamics 365 so that they can accomplish this. You can even start with a very simple bot to do that and you can slowly expand to omnichannel communications using Dynamics 365. So the next one I wanted to touch upon is the city of Los Angeles. City of Los Angeles had a very tall goal of how do I make my city a smart city? Um, so when you think about smart city, there are various aspects to the smart city. How can I how can I improve the communication? And their goal was to use this some very uh, very smart chat chatbot called Chip. Um, you can go to the city of Los Angeles and you can say you can actually interact with that. Um, they were envisioning a smart city, but they were envisioning that with one of the entry points be as a chatbot so that they can engage the residents and also they can transform the employee experience. Last but not least, I, I, there is a customer that's not in here, but I, I do want to talk about them. They're called Tetra Pak. Uh, they are pioneers in food industries. Uh, they actually wanted to see how can they improve their their the lines where they actually package these food products. How can they use this so that um, they can understand which machines need the maintenance so that they can avoid the breakdowns in the machine line. So when the, report, when the repairs are needed, so first they use predictive maintenance based on the data that they were collecting. How can I predict the maintenance of these machineries? And if the repairs are needed, they wanted to have a much more intelligent way to fix it. So they started using HoloLens headset so that they are thinking about mixed reality as well to quickly diagnose and fix the machine issues. Even if the machines are in remote locations, HoloLens allowed them to have the connectivity and a remote guidance so that the engineers can actually fix those machines. And as, and as they were going through the journey, they also realized that they can use videos to capture the images of the products that comes out of the packaging and they can quickly identify the defects and they can they can sort those out in the lines as well so they started using image analytics to see which packaging is off so that they can quickly take those out so that they can reduce the amount of recalls so these are some of the examples um, you can definitely go to Microsoft uh, customers.microsoft.com to see uh, a, a lot more examples on how we have worked with customers and how we have transformed their industry. Um, so I'll also go through one of the examples of the advertising where you see publicists. Um, everybody in every organization um, want to find this means much more quickly. Um, so if I have a question, um, like for example, if I want to understand um, what's uh, how do I how do I look at this particular operational number? I do want to know is there any business desk folks close to me so that I can go have that conversation. Publicity 
businesses took this chatbot approach, so they wanted to give all their employees an entryway through chatbot so that they can identify, they can find folks that are nearby them so that they can connect and they can improve the employee experience much quickly as well. So that's another example of how creatively most customers are looking at chatbot. And as I was talking about all these examples, you would see that chatbot is becoming much more popular, much more quick way so that you can, you can get a short win and you can collect more data so that you can predict and you can forecast what are the other ways that you can improve the processes within your organization as well. Let's 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 talk about the AI journey. When we talk about AI, um, it's it's very important to think about your data. It's very important to think about how clean your data is because the the predictions are really going to be dependent on the data. So don't underestimate the quality of the data that you need and the volume of the data that you need to train your machine learning models. Um, to start with, I would say first you need to understand what happened, and this is where the BI and your analytics is and the reporting is going to come into picture. So this is a very quick entry point so that your business users can go through and they can see what data they have and where are the data gaps so that they can actually understand and they can identify the data gaps and also they can see what questions they want to get answered. And the immediately the, the next easiest thing for most organizations to do would be using a software as a service with the AI. For example, think your Office 365 or Dynamics 365 so that they can get used to the AI, they can get used to some of the prediction capabilities. And the next one would be the pre-trained AI. Uh, for example, use your cognitive services, use the bots or use image analytics, one of those pre-trained services that has a specific solution template and patterns. The reason why the step is important is because this would give you the glimpse of how much of operations um, operational guidance you need to reform so that everybody understands the the capabilities of AI and how to actually apply it. And you can also think about the people and process part of the AI as well. Technology is only part of the equation. You really do need to think about data. You need to also think about people and you also need to think about processes as well. So AI accelerators would give you that jumping point where you can understand the complexity and you can ready your organization. And then you can jump into the custom AI using machine learning models or deep learning models model so that you can start predicting away and you can start using the data science. And since you also you already thought about people and process part of it, your journey would become much more easier and simpler as well. Um, so when we look at um, AI, this is our approach to AI. Think about analytics deep learning and there are a lot of data science toolkits tool sets that we have made you available that would allow you to prepare your data model and operationalize and there are also pre canned solutions as well um, so with that um, let's go into some of the enterprise ai capabilities um, so these are some of the capabilities most enterprises need to transform are to, to become an AI company. So this, this particular chart would allow you to baseline your organization and see where do you need to have more work? Is it skills and competencies? Is it cultural um, aspects that you need to think about? Or is it capabilities that you need to involve? Uh, how strategic you are going to be? And is the data shared across the company? what sort of processes and methods that you need to evolve so that you can actually become an AI company as well. Um, so the, the next one is some of the learnings that we had as far as implementing the AI or ML projects. One of the things I would insist is don't look at AI as a point solution. Um, you really do need to think about the AI as a piece of your strategic digital transformation. So this is not point solutions. I stood up a chatbot and I'm going to be great, but you also need to think about how chatbot is tying into your business process and your strategy as well. And also communicating to your management that 
AI is not going to be perfect at the beginning. And if the data is not right, the the predictions are not going to be right. So AI is not going to give you a wild success at the get-go. You also need to think about process side of things. You also need to think about how are you going to ready people? Because the, the challenge that in, in my experience when I work with major enterprises is to help the people understand the math and, and actually uh, trust the math so that the AI is going to actually predict or it's going to improve the processes. So there are a lot more work that needs to go into the process side of things as well. So don't underestimate that. The other flip side is going to be not having a good roadmap and not having short midterm and long-term strategy on how AI is going to tie into the business strategy. And also the readiness and also the lack of talent or the or the diversity of the talents as well. You don't want to have a group of um, very strong data scientists and call it um, call it a very successful team because you really need to think about a diversity of the team. You need to have a set of data folks. You need to have a set of data scientists. You also need to have a set of business architects who are a cross or a mixed breed of architects or are the analysts who can understand the technology but also can understand the business side of um, of the conversations as well, because you need to have that bridging talent that would allow you to have all the information that you need to make your AI project or initiative much more successful. Last but not least, you also need to think about the model management and the bias that, that could be influenced for your model as well. Um, Every model is going to have inherent bias. So how do we debias that to the best of our ability should be should be front and center of everybody that works on the AI initiative and also do not underestimate the model decay or the model management effort that you need to think about. So continuous integration is also going to be one of the key for you to have a much more successful uh, much more successful AI initiative in your organization as well. Um, so with that, again, not to beat it, not to uh, not to beat the point home. Um, also, you need to think about people. You need to think about how are you going to think about the team size. How are you going to acquire the ta talents? How are you going to retain the talents? And how are you going to have an ethical approach to AI? Um, Again, what is your business strategy and how are you going to identify the biases and how are you going to mitigate the biases as well? Um, and I also think about adoption and change management. Um, technology is another piece where um, you are going to have various technologies. Most of the technologies that we work on could be old. Some of the applications could be on older technologies. So you can't really rip and replace with latest and greatest you really need to have a strategy on how are you going to slowly peel some of the business processes and replace that to a modern technology and also process side of thing how can you get into this devops approach and how can you think about your business value where is the business value and how can ai help to have the business value identified as you're transforming is also going to be important that's why having a short medium and long-term goals and how are you going to slowly transform that in the direction of the long-term vision is also going to be super critical and um and as you are getting started um think big but start small and drive rapid impact. Um, one of the models that work for most customers that we have worked with is have a rapid prototyping and deployment model. For example, do a hackathon so that you can validate whether the idea is sound or whether you do have some data that you can work with and then start doing a pilot so that you are thinking about operationalizing this particular idea. So do a pilot so that you can validate your 
or you can confirm that there is data available and I can get this X, Y, or Z insights. And then think about operationalizing it because you can do multiple POCs and you can kick the tires all around, but until you operationalize it, you're not going to reap the benefits of using the AI. And then once you operationalize it, think about how am I going to improve it or how am I going to add new features as well so that you can you can continuously improve this particular business initiative and you can move towards the long-term goal. So with that, um, you do you can go to Microsoft.com slash AI so that you can learn more about um, more about the AI initiatives.